welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us now, in studio is George Miller. He is from the Irish Rovers, uh, making a stop in Lloydminster, playing at the yes. Vic Theatre. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your song creation. Now, you, you, you're you the writer, yes? You, yes. You write yes. most of the most of the I write music. a lot of the songs, but um, in my case, I have to write them to make them sound old. Otherwise, they're not going to fit into... Apart from the unicorn, wasn't that a party, and grandma got run over by a reindeer, the rest is all more traditional Irish stuff. So mm -hmm. when I write a song, it has to fit into that set. I don't really write modern songs. So instead of writing about uh, maybe cowboys and and their, and maybe driving their pickup truck, I write about somebody in a jaunting car with a horse pulling it. So it's, <laughs> it's really quite simple to do, but I just write them that way to make them sound older, that's all. What, what kind of uh, emotions make up an Irish Rover song? Everything from, um, we, what we like to say is we have a lot of very, very happy war songs in Ireland. Like I'll be singing about the 1798 rebellion about Roddy McCorley, and because it's a very happy up-tempo tune, and we're singing away and the people are clapping and they're smiling and I'm saying they don't understand a bloody word we're singing about <laughs> because it's about this poor man who got caught by the English and drawn and quartered but yet they're all going woo yay and it's <laughs> but so all of our war songs are like that so we have uh, sort of sad love songs and happy war songs and uh, that's what it's all about I think I think the secret one of the secrets of Irish music it's almost like a, a polka you don't have to like a polka but if you hear it you sort of your fingers start tapping yep. or your toes tapping away mm -hmm. I think Irish music is like that too. It's just good, fun, up-tempo music, and the sad songs are, are sad, and, but everything else is, um, there's no happy in between. It's either sad or happy, and <laughs> most of it's happy. Do you ever feel that when you're, when you're watching them and, and saying they're not even understanding what I'm saying, do you ever feel like your, your writing is getting lost? Sometimes, but, yeah. um, but the fact of the matter is they're paying their money for two hours of, to feel good for a couple of hours, right. and that's, that's what we give them. We're not a, we've never done political material. We're not a political band. We're a mixed band, for mm -hmm. one thing, and so why ostracize half of the audience anyway? So we sing maybe songs that are maybe of Ireland of maybe 50 or 60 years ago when it was more flowery and okay. pretty colleens and fast race horses and um, of course not to forget that lovely moonshine whiskey that is made in Ireland so <laughs> that's the type of songs that we sing about and you know I, it's I think the people are there for two hours and if they leave whistling the drunken sailor then we've done our job for two hours we've made them happy and that's all we try to do it's not it's not rocket science by any means we just go on we enjoy ourselves so in enjoying each other and our songs, it, that goes across to the audience and hopefully they go out enjoying themselves as well. Let's talk a little bit about uh, an, another band transition you guys went through. In 1993, you guys formed your own record company. Yes. So, you know, uh, traditionally, th that's sort of a fight, right, between the artist and the, and the, and the label. Always. It doesn't in every matter situation. if you're the Beatles or who you are, exactly. everybody, I think, has sued their record company somewhere over yeah. royalty statements. <laughs> and, um, talk a little bit about that transition then. I mean, all right. uh, what was that like going from you know having was, partial control to having full control? It was hard at first yeah. because uh, it's it's expensive, it's time consuming, and all of a sudden you don't have any record company people telling you where to where to put that song or where to send it and yeah. all of this sort of thing. But as you get a, as you're an older group like us who does Celtic music, we would not be played on the radio anyway. It's just not right. something that happens anymore. We got lucky with wasn't that a party in the unicorn and mm -hmm. well, grandma they play it anyway at Christmas. They have to. <laughs> but other than that, there's not really a place for us to be on, on today's airwaves. So in starting our own record company, what it did for us is we know where every record is going, how much is spent here, how much it cost me to record that album and how to recover the costs. It gives us the upper hand that you never have when you're a young artist. So now that we're older and very old, actually, we're <laughs> very old. Now that we're old, we can control that ourselves. So if let's say a Walmart in North Dakota wants 100 CDs, we'll send them 100 CDs and they'll pay us for them. Whereas before we never knew what was happening. It's a lot more time consuming, but we have people working for us that, that do that sort of thing and it helps a lot. So. Excellent, and this yes. isn't your first television appearance. You've actually hosted uh, the odd three yes. award-winning television yes. series, and yes. you actually have a new special coming up, Home in Ireland, just going to air on PBS. Talk yes. a little bit about that endeavor. Well, we just filmed it last, uh, almost a year to the day we were in Ireland, all around the north coast of Ireland, and it was called. it is called Home in Ireland. In other words, we've gone back home to do it, and we filmed it uh, as a really as our, for ourselves and our fans, not really 
concerned too much about TV. So after we had done it and um, we sent it to a couple of places and PBS immediately said, we want it. We have to have oh. this. Mm -hmm. And we said, OK, it's yours. So <laughs> they sort of rearranged it a wee bit because they have to have so many breaks and that we yeah. don't, mm -hmm. you know, when you buy the DVD, it's just 95 minutes straight through. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be shown on, I believe, their first showing is November 27th. And are you near the border? Do you get PBS here in this yep. part yep, of the world? Yeah, on satellite, yep. All right, well, then it's it's shown on November 27th. Then they're going to reshow it again in March. And we're doing another one for them. It's a Christmas uh, one that we're starting in Banff in November. So the outdoor shots will be done in Banff. And you'll see us not skiing, but certainly falling down hills a lot because <laughs> we're not skiers. And then we're going to do the indoor shots in uh, in Ontario. That'll be the, the concert segment will be Ontario. And it's basically going to be a, an Irish or not a, an Irish Canadian Christmas is what it's going to be. So, so we'll see like how that goes. Sounds like a Canadian Christmas to me. It is going to be a Canadian <laughs> Christmas. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, George. This Whitney, has been a pleasure. Well, thanks for your time, and I really appreciate this. I hope you enjoy your stay in Lloydminster. Well, we will. We will. <laughs> this has been our conversation with George Miller. He is with the Irish Rovers.